Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. This is Dr. Wang here. There are three lectures and one self-learning package on the topic immunology in this general module 2. The first lecture is on immunity, which covers the basic of immune system and inner immunity. The second lecture is on adaptive immunity. This is followed by the lecture on immunopathology. The last topic is a self-learning package on the principles of antigen-antibody interactions. The topic for today's lecture is on immunity. Immunity can be classified into inner immunity and adaptive or acquired immunity. In this lecture, you will learn about the immune system and their functions, the components of inner immunity, how pathogens evade the inner immunity, and the role of inner immunity in stimulating adaptive immune response. The details of adaptive immunity will be covered by Dr. Aslin in the next lecture. Let's start with the definitions. The immune system is a complex network of cells, tissues, organs, and the substances that they make that helps the body fight infections and other diseases. Immunology is the study of structure and function of the immune system, which allows us to know how the body fights disease and infection. Immunity is the ability of a host to resist or eliminate potentially harmful foreign materials or abnormal cells such as bacteria, viruses, parasites and cancer cells. Immune response is how our body recognizes and defends itself against bacteria, viruses and substances that are foreign and harmful. The immune system consists of tissues, cells and molecules responsible for the recognition and removal of foreign or non-self materials. It consists of activities such as defense against invading pathogens, including viruses, bacteria, fungus and parasites, identification and destruction of abnormal cells, which is the primary defense against cancer, removal of worn out cells such as old blood cells and tissue debris that are arising from injury or disease. This table displays a list of organs, tissues, cells and molecules that involve in the immune system. The immune system includes organs, tissues of the lymphatic system, such as the thymus, spleen, tongue cells, lymph nodes, lymph vessels, and bone marrow. The immune cells, which are the white blood cells, and the molecules or substances that are secreted by the immune cells. There are two types of immunity, innate and adaptive. Adaptive immunity is also referred as acquired immunity. Inner immunity is the first line of immune response. It relies on the defense mechanisms that present before infection. If the inner immunity fails to protect the body, the adaptive immunity, which is the second line of immune response, will be roped in to protect the body. Adaptive immunity relies on the mechanism that adapt after infection and it is mainly handled by B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. This table gives an overview of the differences between inner immunity and adaptive immunity. Inner immunity refers to defenses that are present at birth. They are always available to provide rapid responses to protect us against disease. It is non-specific and can recognize a broad range of microbes through the whole cell pattern recognition receptor. It does not involve recognition of a specific microbe. Therefore, prior exposure to the microbes is not required to establish memory. Unlike the adaptive immunity, it is acquired during the course of life. Adaptive immunity is based on a specific response to a specific microbe once a microbe has breached the inner immunity defenses. It adjusts to handle a particular microbes, therefore it's slower to respond, but it does have a memory component 
that allow the body to act more effectively targeting the same pathogen in the future. The host cell receptors are specific to a particular pathogen. How does host cells recognize non-self molecules? Host cells recognize non-self or foreign molecules through receptor interaction. Following the exposure of microorganisms, several mediators, for example, cytokines, complement proteins of the inner immunity are recruited to the site of infection. The first step that takes place is the attachment of pathogens, cell surface molecule, to the host cell's receptor. The pathogen cell surface molecule is called Pathogen Associated Molecular Patterns, PAMP. These surface molecules are conserved, meaning similar or identical and common to most pathogens. For example, peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharides that are present on bacterial surface. The host cell receptor is called Pathogen Recognition Receptors, PRR, which recognize PAMP. These PRR are conserved and can be either soluble that is free moving or bound to the membrane of the host cells. The classical example is the toll-like receptor. Here is an example of PAMP of pathogen get recognized by PRR of host cells. PRR detect PAMP and initiate immune responses can be either through soluble or cell-associated PRR. PAMP of microorganism bind to soluble PRR. PRR that are coated with PAMP will enhance phagocytosis through macrophages, which leads to lysis of microorganism. Cell-associated PRR, such as the TORA receptor on host cells, can detect the pathogen PAMP and activate host cells to produce inflammatory mediators signaling other immune cells such as neutrophils, dendritic cells to the site of infection. This is the basic overview of our body defense. All types of pathogens, they have to pass through three layers of defense in order to successfully infect a human body. The first and second line defenses are part of the inner immune system whereas the third line defenses are referred to as the adaptive immune system. Many leukocytes or white blood cells coordinate efforts in controlling infections in the second and third lines of immune defense. First line defenses keep pathogens on the outside or neutralize them before infection begins. The skin, mucous membranes, Certain, anti certain antimicrobial substances are part of these defenses. Second line defenses slow down or contain the infections when first line defenses fail. They include proteins that produce inflammation, fever that enhances cytokine activity, and phagocytes and natural killer cells which attach and destroy virus infected or cancer cells. When the second line defenses fail, the third line of defense, which is the humoral and cellular immunity, will get activated to destroy the specific pathogens. Humoral response will produce antibodies, while the cellular response will activate cytotoxic and helper T cells. These specialized lymphocytes allow the body to establish memory so that it can be more effectively respond to the same pathogen in the future. This table shows the immune cells involved in the immune system. In the inert, it has basophils, eosinophils, and mast cells. All these cells are non-specific and can bind to a broad range of pathogens. Neutrophils, monocytes, dendritic cells, natural killer cells are also non-specific towards pathogen. However, they also play an important role in stimulating the adaptive immune response. For the adaptive immunity, B cells differentiate to plasma cells that produce antibodies. Activated T cells secrete cytokines that regulate the immune response. Here, I will describe in detail about inner immunity. The first line of defense, 
acts as a physical barrier to keep the pathogen out of the body. Skin contains keratin, which is a structural protein that helps form a physical barrier to prevent the entry of pathogen. Mucous membrane lines the gastrointestinal, respiratory and genitourinary tracts of the body. Mucous membrane produces mucus that helps trap foreign particles. The cilia present in the lower respiratory tract propels the microbes outside, allow for the removal of invading pathogens. Lacrimal apparatus of eyes produces tears to flush out any microbes entering the body. The sebaceous glands of skin produce and secrete sebum provides a protection to the skin. Lysozyme released in sweat, tears, saliva, and urine help destroy bacterial cell walls. The low pH of sebum on skin, gastric juice in the stomach, vaginal secretion, urine, urinary tracts destroy and inhibits the growth of bacteria. Small intestine also contains many proteolytic enzymes that inactivate microbes. Microbiota is the normal bacterial flora present in the body. It competes with pathogens for nutrients and space by producing substances harmful to the pathogens and alter conditions that affect pathogen survival. For example, in adult vagina, an acidic pH is maintained by normal lactobacilli, inhibiting establishment of yeast, anaerobes, and gram-negative bacteria. In large intestine, resident E. coli produces bacteriocin, which inhibit growth of Salmonella and Shigella. If the pathogen survive the first line of defense, then they will meet with the second line of defense, in which comprises the phagocytes, inflammation process, the systemic inflammation process, which is the fever, and antimicrobial substances produced by various cells. This diagram here shows the various types of blood cells present in the body. Granular leukocytes, which consist of mast cells, ionosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, and agranular leukocytes, which includes the dendritic cells, monocytes, macrophages, and the natural killer cells, all these cells play a role in the second line of defense. This diagram shows the lymphatic system in the body. Lymphatic system is important in the second line of defense because it is the pathway of many of the immune cells. The lymphatic system consists of a fluid called limb, vessel called lymphatic vessel, and a number of structures and organs containing lymphoid tissues and red bone marrow where stem cells develop into blood cells, including lymphocytes. Lymph nodes are the site of activation of T cells and B cells, which destroy microbes by immune responses. For example, when dendritic cells bind to pathogen, it gets activated and moves through the lymphatic system to the lymph node to activate B cells and T cells and initiate a cascade of immune responses. Here, I will briefly go through some of the function of the cells in the immune system. White blood cells or leukocytes are divided into two main categories based on their appearance under the light microscope, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes are differentiated into four types of cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and mast cells. Neutrophils are commonly called polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Neutrophils are highly phagocytic and motile, are active in the initial stages of an infection, and have the ability to leave the blood and enter and infect the tissue and destroy microbes and foreign particles. Eosinophils are somewhat phagocytic and also have the ability to leave blood and enter tissue. Their major function is to kill certain parasites such as helminths. Basophils and mast cells are leukocytes in nearby connective tissues, which produce histamines. 
that are important in inflammation and allergic responses. There are three different types of agranulocytes, monocytes, dendritic cells, and lymphocytes. Monocytes are not actively phagocytic until they leave circulating blood and enter specific body tissue and mature into macrophage. For example, in the liver, monocytes become cover cells, in connective tissue becomes histiocytes, in brain becomes microglial, in lung becomes alveolar macrophage. Macrophage is phagocytic. After macrophage engulfing bacterial cells and destroying them, macrophage will put the degraded protein on its cell membrane and become an antigen-presenting cell to activate the adaptive immune response. Dendritic cells found in skin, mucous membranes, thymus. It is phagocytic and able to secrete digested antigen on the cell surface to become an antigen-presenting cell. It is mainly found in the tissues. Once activated, the dendritic cells will make it ways to the lymph nodes to activate B and T, and T cells lymphocytes. Natural killer cells are leukocytes that roam in the body looking for virus infected cells or cancer cells. It is not a phagocyte. It destroys target cells by cytolysis and by creating holes in the plasma membrane, which leads to cell apoptosis. Phagocytes are white blood cells that protect the body by ingesting harmful foreign particles, bacteria, dead or dying cells. There are three main groups of phagocytes, namely monocytes and macrophages, dendritic cells, and granulocytes, which comprises neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and mast cells. Phagocytes have toll like receptors, which recognize pathogen molecular pattern. This is a diagrammatic illustration of the different stages of phagocytosis. The first step is chemotesis, followed by adherence. Chemotesis is the chemical attraction of phagocytes to microorganisms. Among the chemical, chemotetic chemicals that attract phagocytes are microbial products, components of white blood cells, damaged tissues, and cytokines. Adherence is the attachment of the phagocytes plasma membrane to the surface of microorganism. Adherence is facilitated by the attachment of PAMP of microbes to the receptor, such as toll-like receptor on the surface of phagocytes. The binding of PAMP to toll-like receptor not only initiates phagocytosis, but also induces the phagocytes to release specific cytokines that recruit additional phagocytes. In some instances, microbes can be more readily phagocytosed if they are first coated with certain serum proteins that promote attachment of the microorganisms to the phagocytes. This coating process is called opsonization. From adherence, ingestion occurs. The plasma membrane of the phagocyte extends projections called pseudopods that engulf the microorganisms and form a vesicle called phagosome. Next, phagosome merge with lysosome to form a phagolysosome. Lysozyme and other enzyme reactive oxygen species will destroy the pathogen within the phagolysosome. After enzymes have digested the content of the phagolysosome, the indigestible material is called residual body. This residual body is then excreted from the cells. In summary, there are five main steps in the phagocytosis. First step is chemotesis, followed by adherence, ingestion, digestion, and elimination. Some microorganisms can undergo certain process to avoid 
or invade phagocytosis. For example, Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus pneumoniae, can inhibit adherence by using the M protein or capsule. Staphylococcus aureus can kill phagocytes by leukocydines. Listeria monocytogenes lies phagocytes via the membrane attack complex. Shigella rickettsia are able to escape phagosome. HIV, mycobacterium tuberculosis, able to prevent phagosome lysosome fusion. Coxilla bernetii, able to survive in phagolysosome from the action of digestive enzyme. Inflammation is a localized complex biological process by which body responds to pathogens and irritants. The signs and symptoms of inflammation includes pain due to release of certain chemicals such as histamine, redness due to more blood go to the affected area, immobility that results from local loss of function in severe inflammation, swelling caused by accumulation of fluids due to increased capillary permeability, heat due to vasodilation causes increases blood flow to the affected area. Inflammation has the following functions. First, to destroy the invading microbes. Second, if destruction not possible, then limiting the spread of infection. Third, repair and replaces tissue damage by the injurious agent. Fourth, stimulate adaptive immune responses. This is a diagram illustrating the steps leading to inflammatory response. First, tissue damage causes immune cells such as mast cells to release mediators that increase vascular capillary permeability. These chemicals are called vasoactive mediators such as histamine. The cage of plasma proteins through the blood vessels lead to the recruitment of phagocytes, for example, macrophage, to the site of inflammation. Phagocytes engulf microbes and dead material by phagocytosis. Pro-inflammatory cytokines released to activate T and B cells in the adaptive immune response. Inflammatory response if often accompanied by fever. Some cytokines, for example, interleukin-1, tumor, necrosis factor, stimulate the brain to make prostaglandins. This prostaglandin causes the hypothalamus to reset the hypothalamic thermostat at a higher temperature, thereby causing fever. Up to a certain point, fever is considered a defense against disease. How? High temperature helps increase production of T-cells, helps intensify the effect of interferon, speed up the body tissue repair, and also slow down the growth rate of some bacteria. Therefore, fever is somehow considered a defense against disease. In response to the microbial antigens, dendritic cells, macrophages, and other cells secrete antimicrobial substances such as cytokines, complements, histamines, that mediate many of the cellular reactions of inert immunity. Cytokines are small proteins secreted by immune cells that act as signaling molecules that mediate and regulate immunity, inflammation, and hematopoiesis. The most common cytokines are interferon, interleukins, and tumor necrosis factor. Viral infection induces expression of antiviral proteins known as interferons. During viral infection, viral infected cells will release interferons, for example, interferon alpha and interferon gamma, causing nearby cells to heighten their antiviral defenses by producing antiviral protein that inhibit viral replication. For interferon gamma, which is which is secreted by activated T cell and NK cell, it helps signaling other immune cells such as neutrophils 
macrophages and NK cells to kill bacteria. Interleukins are proteins that synthesize quickly and secreted in response to infections and is not stored inside the cells. Interleukin mostly secreted by T lymphocytes and macrophages and are particularly important in stimulating immune responses such as inflammation. Tumor necrosis factor is a small protein used by the immune system for cell signaling. If an infection detected, immune cells such as macrophages release tumor necrosis factor to alert other immune cells of the immune system leading to inflammation. Tumor necrosis factor is also able to induce fever, apoptotic cell death, and to inhibit carcinogenesis. Another type of antimicrobial substances are the complement proteins. Complement proteins are a group of small proteins produced by the liver and circulate in the blood as inactive precursors. When complement gets stimulated, it triggers the following immune response. First, formation of membrane attack complex, which causes the rupturing of cell wall of bacteria. Second, enhanced phagocytosis by opsonization. C3B complement protein has the most important opsonizing activity. Third, causes inflammation by attracting macrophages and neutrophils. How do complement protein lyse pathogen? Activated complement proteins form complexes of proteins which are called membrane attack complex that create holes in the bacterial cell walls. This leads to water and salt diffuse into the bacterium and eventually the rupture of the cell wall of the bacteria. How do complement facilitate phagocytosis? Complement is able to facilitate phagocytosis through opsonization. Opsonization is a process in which pathogens are coated with complements of proteins so that the, co the coated pathogens can be recognized by the complement receptor on phagocytic cells, making the coated pathogens more readily engulfed by phagocytes. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or WhatsApp me. Thank you.